It is week three of the high school football season. KMA Sports, as always, has you covered all throughout the evening, starting at 6.20 with the Iowa Western Community College High School Football Preview Show, followed by the Red Oak Chrysler Football Connection Show. 19 reporters out and about this week. And then we close it on down with the High School Football Scoreboard Show, brought to you by Keist Chevy in Oakland and Keist Auto Center, your Ford and GM dealer in Harlan, a phrase which is... Uh, Ryan's getting a lot better at that, and he's you know pretty pretty well close to having it knocked down. Let's take a look at these 19 games. There are 19 reporters we'll be hearing from. We're just going to go uh, one by one this week. Ryan, take a game. I take a game. So let's start out. Shenandoah at Red Oak. Casey Herzberg is there. Shenandoah is 2-0. They haven't been, well, 3-0, 2-0, same year they were 2-0 and 3-0, so 3-0, uh, trying to equal what they did in 2002. Yeah, and they get a team that's uh, really given them problems the last couple of years in uh, this Red Oaks squad. And, or Red Oaks uh, coming off a very big win last week against Riverside. They're, they're starting to find some balance with their offense, so Shannon Doe is going to have their work cut out for them. Yeah, so many memories from this game. You know, the missed field goal that was actually in so says a lot of Shenandoah folks you know the slaughter kind of the year before that and then Connor Jansky the big touchdown catch his only catch of the year which uh, won Red Oak the game a couple of years ago on to AHSTW at Clarinda Jan Harris is there for that's a non-district matchup I really like the matchup two teams that love to run the football Clarinda's got their scheme their spinner back AHSTW has opened it up a little bit spread it out a little bit but they're still running the ball a lot Dustin Angle five touchdowns last week of course we all know about Nate Herbs. He's a terrific runner and passer and leader. Zach Carlson for Clarinda, one of the shining stars here early on, breakout performers in the area. On to Cam at Stanton as we hit Class 8-man District 8 tonight. Brent Barnett is in Stanton for that. And uh, Ryan, your, your thoughts on that one? Uh, it's a very good matchup. you got a Stanton team that, uh, that's playing well. The defense really playing well for, uh, for Stanton. They've only allowed six points through two weeks. Connor Holtman's moved into the quarterback role, and he's only thrown in three incompletions, and he's thrown more touchdowns than that. Uh, and then Cam, you look at a team that uh, they still have one Tickner left in, in Drew, so uh, this Cam team still uh, trying to find itself a little bit coming off a loss to Xyra Elkhorn Kimbleton should be a good matchup. Also in 8-Man District 8, Jared Williamson, Nishnabot, and a student. I think this is our first time we've ever had a high school student as a reporter. He's going to tell us about East Mills at Nishnabot tonight in Hamburg. Botna coming off of the victory last week, uh, so everybody in the district now has a victory. Chad Blank scoring many different ways. He's kind of like a Chris Osborne for Sydney, no matter which, you know, anytime he gets his hands on the ball. He's looking to score. Fumble recovery, punt return, kick return. Uh, great receiver as well. East Mills defense has been terrific throughout the season uh, once again and uh, Josh Hopkins been all over the place on both sides of the ball. He'll definitely get a steady dose again tonight. Fremont Mills is at Sydney, one of my favorite matchups every single year. Kent Larson's there. Yeah, it, is a, it is a fun matchup. You get a rivalry matchup with those two teams. Fremont Mills, a little bit of a hit. No Jason Rustin uh, at quarterback. He's down with a collarbone injury. Sam Phillips has stepped into that role very nicely. Provides uh, some nice balance back there. And uh, Sydney, uh, Cameron Whitehead moving that offense. And then you got Micah Graham who's a, a weapon for them. So this should be a good game. Lennox at Essex is the final eight-man District 8 game. Dean Adkins will be in Essex tonight. And uh, now that Lennox team, they have just been really almost flawless in their two victories, two blowout wins over East Union and Mormon Trail. Run the ball, pass the ball. Nobody can move the ball on that defense because Spencer Brown's in the backfield too quick. Uh, as for Essex, they're going to be without Cody Davis. Lost last week, gave up over 300 yards rushing to Mike Ward of East Union so that Lennox rushing game uh, could have a heyday. Essex has got to find a way to slow him down. Stanbury at Rockport is an eight-man battle. Uh, 275 conference team Rockport. Eric Chamberlain is there and uh, each of these teams looking to continue winning streaks. Yeah, Rockport's coming off a big win over Albany last week, and uh, the balance this year for that uh, Rockport offense really impressive. Jace Hughes running the uh, running things from the quarterback side. Stanbury, it's traditional Stanbury. They've got two running backs that uh, kind of lead the way from that triple option attack, and it's going to be a very physical game. Good test for Rockport. Cam has the Tickners. Stanbury has the Lukes. They still have some Luke uh, players with the last name Luke on the team. Not first name, but probably some first names too. Bishop LeBlond is in Maryville tonight. Tom Alvarez is in uh, the Hound Pound. And Maryville looking to go to 4-0 on the season. Bishop LeBlond won their opening uh, conference game, Midland Empire conference game, last, last week. And anytime Maryville's in the MEC, they're going to be the favorites. So uh, if Bishop LeBlond has uh, uh, can find a way to get a victory here, 
year, then uh, more power to them. But Maryville's uh, definitely the favorite. They've got a rolling again this year. In Nebraska tonight, our Nebraska game of the night, Kurt Mannion has Mount Michael Benedictine at Nebraska City. Still non-district play here for a little while there in Nebraska. And uh, Neb City looking to bounce back. Yeah, they're one and one. They had an opening week went over Auburn, uh, the loss to Ron Colley last week. Mount Michael Benedictine's 0 and 2. They have a loss to Ron Colley in week 1. That was a 40 to 0 game. So, uh, Nebraska City you think would be the favorite here and a big chance for the Pioneers. One of the toughest ones for me there in Pickers Game Picks this week was uh, Mount Michael against Nebraska City. Moving back into Iowa, Class A District 8 tonight. Bedford is at Southeast Warren. Uh, Jordan Matheny will be there in Liberty Center. Now, Bedford, uh, great opening week against Griswold last week. Maybe not uh, what they wanted to see. Southwest Valley kind of hung around with, with them a little bit. Southeast Warren put up a lot of points on the board, but Woodward Academy put up a lot more. And so Bedford should be able to move the football, whether that's with Justin Fulkerts or Clay Cox or McMillan or Hunter. I mean, they have a lot of weapons they can use there behind their really strong offensive line. Also in Class A District 8 tonight, Mount Air is at Clarinda Academy. Brett Ruggles will be at that one. And uh, Ryan? Uh, you've got two teams here that are 0-2, and Mount Air, a real surprise that they're 0-2. Uh, a loss to a very good Albia team, and then last week the uh, upset loss to, uh, to Shenandoah by a point. Mount Air team that's struggling to move the ball on offense. Uh, they're really still trying to find themselves. Uh, they've got a good one in Kyle Dolchek back there who, who can uh, get things going if he gets on the edge. Clarinda Academy, uh, they're trying to find themselves after a blowout loss last week. Passing game has really been uh, down for Mount Air. They can, you know, if they can find a way to pass the ball a little bit, open things up for Kyle Dolchek there in the backfield. But you know, he does pretty well even. Uh even without it. Audubon is at Griswold. This is Class A District 1 opener for these two teams. Jason Hyde is in Griswold for that. Audubon, the top-rated team in Class A by Radio Iowa, our top-rated team in Super 6. Griswold's coming off of their blowout victory over Clarendon Academy. So, I mean, how much do you really take from that? Uh, you know, the first week against Bedford well, it was a real tough one for them, and they're going up against a great defense again in this one. And two of the best defensive players in small class Iowa, Wyatt Robinette for Griswold, leads Class A in tackles, while Matthew Smith Peterson for Ottoman is sixth in Class A in tackles and might be the best overall defender in all of Class A. Also in that district, Logan Magnolia at St. Albert, Joe Narmi and Counts of Bluffs on the hill for that one. Now, uh, not very often you see these two teams coming off of losses. No, it's it's you don't see them coming off of losses. You don't see them coming off losses in the same week almost ever. Uh, Logan Magnolia had a 16-game winning streak uh, snapped last week. These are two uh, proud traditions uh, for football teams. It's, it's a game that I think is going to come down to uh, the battle in the trenches. St. Albert's offensive line is young, inexperienced, and you know Logan Magnolia, they'll load up the box, they'll be aggressive uh, on defense, so that could be a real big key. Turnover is another thing. Logan Magnolia turned the ball over a lot uh, in their last week loss to Underwood. St. Albert, uh, they gave up 22 points in 37 seconds against Trainer. so it should be a good game and uh, also a great thing going on uh, selling uh, t-shirts to uh, commemorate the rivalry. $10 uh, from each shirt, uh, shirt will go to uh, Matt Strait, Lomas coach as he's fighting a battle against cancer. Stole my line there with the turnovers. None. The, this is the third time we've done this. Uh, moving to Maple Valley Anthonoto at Tri Center in Neola tonight. Matt Hayes also in that district there. Uh, Tri Center. I mean, how much of their first two weeks is them? How much of it was just playing two really good teams in Underwood and AHSTW? We're going to find out a little bit here tonight. Maple Valley has a pretty good team and a great running back. And Marvin Gaines, they'll give him the ball 30-plus times. He's a little jitterbug, but he'll go in. the. You know, he's a grinder, too. I mean, you get the ball that many times, you know that you're, you're gaining some tough yards as well. So interesting uh, to see how Tri-Center handles things uh, Hopefully for them, not another you know 69 to 70 points on the board against them. We move on to Class 1A District 1, where that is just got to be the most loaded district uh, we're going to be watching throughout the year. I can Manning at Trainer Keith Christensen joins the staff, and Trainer is looking for three in a row. Yeah, and they've had two really good wins this season. They beat Lott and Bronson on a field goal late, and then last week beating St. Albert for what might be the first time ever in the program's history, scoring 22 points in 37 seconds. This is an interesting matchup, and, and one thing to highlight in this one, Nolan Chapman for trainer, uh, playing receiver. You know, he's tough to guard. And then you have Kyle Wagner on the other side for uh, IKM Manning, who will probably draw the assignment on him. He's 6'3", and he's, he's athletic too. That could be a really fun matchup all night. 
I liked watching them go at it in basketball, too. Two really good basketball players and great shooters. Missouri Valley is in Underwood, also in that 1A District 1. And Underwood, I mean, what can you say about them in the first two weeks? They just have nearly an unstoppable offense. You know, the way they pass the ball, with Nick Peterson, how efficient he has been this year, with Tyler Kahn, Colin Upstreet, Jesse Jensen, all the, you know, all the, and, then, and then you add Isaiah Humphrey out there as well. But they also have that running game. Isaiah Humphrey on the outside, John Schnack coming right at you, and that just opens the passing game up even more. And it's almost, uh, you know, pray you just you pray that you can stop this team or, or just hold them down a little bit uh missouri valley Good win against Maple Valley last week. Uh, Justin Miller had a great game on the ground, over 150 yards rushing, great defensive game, had a punt return for a touchdown, so you'll be hearing his name quite a bit if Mo Valley is going to have an opportunity. In 1A District 8, Southwest Valley is at Panora against a state-rated Panorama team, and Matt Bew, the AD for Southwest Valley. By the way, Louis Curtis will be our Underwood reporter. Uh, Southwest Valley Panorama with Matt Bew there in Panora. Uh, Ryan? Uh, Southwest Valley, they're, they're coming off a, a game that they have to be pretty pleased with last week. Uh, they stayed within 12 points of Bedford had that game real close Chance Cobb the sophomore quarterback uh, starting to figure things out a little bit more in this offense and uh, they're playing uh, like you said a state ranked Panorama team Panorama though struggled a little bit on the defensive side of things they can put points up but uh, they've struggled a little bit to stop teams so Southwest Valley might be able to score with them Timberwolves might have had a chance to win that game last week. They threw four interceptions. So there, you know, Cobb, he's just a sophomore. Not everything's perfect right now, but he had a, you know over 180 yards rushing, over 100 yards passing too. So he's getting things done. Glenwood at Atlantic is a Class 3A District 8 game in Atlantic. No freshman game there this week. Atlantic doesn't have enough players out, so no freshman game. They're going to move it up to seven o'clock. Brian Bertini has reports from that one. Glenwood, I love this team. I think they're really, really proud of what their offensive line has been doing. Physical and uh, very. Uh, good communication up there up front and they've got a lot of different backs they can go to not just Colton Wilberty and their quarterback but Cole Offelbein, uh, Maverick Decker on the outside. There's there's a lot of different guys they can turn to there and they just got a lot of speed back there. Atlantic, I don't know a lot about them. Uh, they're, they are one and one. They uh, lost their first game obviously and then beat Dennison Sleswick, hung on to beat Dennison Sleswick last week. Just uh, quick stats is you know not there for me. The first two weeks nothing uh, uh, up there at all. So uh, Although I haven't checked in a day so it could be different. Harlan Lewis Central, the other game uh, involving a 3A District 8 team. This is a non-district game, though, between two Hawkeye 10 conference teams. Our number one, Lewis Central, and two teams in the Super 6 in 2A, 3A, 4A. Brian Clark at 7.30 starter, only 7.30 kick tonight. Saving the best for last. This is an awesome matchup. You, a Harlan team, that's that they're back. You know, After last season, a disappointing year for them. They come out last week and, and uh, put it on Carroll 36 to nothing in that one. Lewis Central, they've looked uh, good. They, they've stood up to the test in, in the first two weeks they've maintained that number one spot and in the in the super six so this is going to be a, a very good matchup and the kickers got to watch those kickers those are the two of the best kickers in the area and maybe in the state ethan knudsen for harlan can boot it from you know 40 yards plus he made three field goals against Carroll last week and of course we know about caleb shudak who's a four-year starter at the kicker spot for lewis central looking forward to those matchups, all 19 of them on the Red Oak Chrysler Football Connection Show. Again, all of our coverage starts at 620 with the preview show, followed by the Connection Show, the scoreboard show, 620 until midnight. Week three is here. You ready to do it? I'm ready to do it. Let's do it.